The Strix 1080 Ti isn't just a beastie card, it's a beautiful card, but sometimes one has to ponder what it may look like in a different colour. The Strix unfortunately only comes in one colour, and that's black, so today I decided to mod the GTX 1080 Ti. Greetings everyone, my name is Dom, and today I will be painting my Asus Strix GTX 1080 Ti white. I'll also be giving it a custom backplate, otherwise I would have been painting that white too. I'll be showing you guys how to take apart the cooler, and the things I used and the steps I took to achieve the results I did. Please bear in mind, this is my first time painting anything, so the finish is not flawless. Although, considering the results, I wouldn't say it's terrible. Alright, first I'll go through the things you'll need to do this. I ordered some Plasti Dip off of eBay, this was just the plain white one. I'm going for Plasti Dip because you can peel it off if you're not happy with it, and start again. Also because it's non-conductive, so it won't cause a short and won't melt all over your PC when the GPU is in use. I didn't go the sanding route because this would have permanently changed the cooler, which I didn't want to do in case I ever needed to return the card. You will also need a very fine and small paintbrush for final touch-ups. You can get this off Amazon or your nearest DIY store. You'll need a screwdriver, some painter's masking tape to mask off any details you don't want to get painted, and a scalpel to make some precise cuts in the masking tape. Make sure you get some spare thermal paste too, I recommend MX4 as it performs very well. Also get some thermal paste remover. Isopropyl alcohol will work, I recommend 90% or over, but I got this remover and purifier kit. Finally, get a microfiber cloth to clean the cooler shroud of dust and debris before painting. Everything I use will be linked in the description down below. Okay, so this is what the card looks like at stock. It's a very nice looking card, with a slight rough texture to it, which I wanted to maintain, so that meant doing lighter coats. To begin with, we have to take apart the cooler. Flip the card and you'll find 6 screws on the back plate. Unscrew these. This will allow the cooler to be freed from the GPU itself. Do be careful when you take off the cooler, it can be fairly hard to pull off. Make sure you also detach the cables for the LEDs and the fans before pulling it off completely. Please also take note, you will have to remove and then replace the thermal compound a bit later on. The stock stuff they put on is never as good as what you can buy off Amazon, so this will likely reduce temps a fair bit. Now we have the cooler separate from the card, we need to remove the shroud. In this case there is another 6 screws, 3 by the fans and 3 along the side of the shroud. Unscrew all of these but take care with the screws by the fans, as the blades are quite fragile. Great, now we have the shroud free from the cooler. Here I approach the masking stage wrong. The shroud LEDs don't run the length of the cooler, they are just LEDs at one end of the card that shine into a rubber, transparent tube. First I masked off the holes where the LEDs lights shine through, but you don't need to do this. The tubes can be removed easily, although I didn't get this on film. Do mask off the window for the side LEDs of the Republic of Gamers logo. Also mask off the ends of the connectors on the LED cable, the solder points themselves, and the LED lights. Lay the masking tape over the area you want to mask, then run your fingernail along the grooves of the area you don't want to paint where it ends. This will show the shape of the area so you can use the scalpel to cut the masking tape. Once all areas are masked, use a microfiber cloth to clean away dust and debris on the shroud because you do not want to spray paint something that's dusty. The dust will show and make your finish look awful. Once the shroud is clean, pick your area to spray. I recommend practice spray painting on something else to get your technique down. I took apart a GTX 650 Ti and painted one of its pieces white. I did this outside where I thought would be the best place, but I was wrong. There were bubbles and dust and other bits of debris in the air that got onto the card's pieces and I didn't realise until I painted over them. For this reason, I do not recommend you paint outside. So that turned out shite. Time to completely ruin a card that only costs £700 more. Okay, so I picked my garage. It was fairly well ventilated, although that's not a huge issue to be honest, I care more about my expensive GPU looking good than passing out from fumes, so there we go. What's important is there wasn't anything flying around the room that would ruin my coat. Lay down some cardboard, I used the packaging my spray paint came with, um, and a box of beer cans to make sure I couldn't spray into the background of the garage. This was a wide enough area to ensure only the card was sprayed. Don't just go right ahead, uncap it and spray on the shroud, that would be bad. Do one last check that the shroud is clean and free from dust, then shake the can like there's no tomorrow, shake it for at least about 10 seconds. After that, give a few sprays directly onto the cardboard surface until it starts spraying that lovely white paint. Once you're sure it's shooting the white stuff and not firing blanks, well, hey, you can start spraying. 
I do want to apologise for the lighting and the graininess of the footage here. It was late at night, so this was the best I could do. You can't be sheepish with the spray paint like I was. That will cause your coats to come out inconsistent. When you spray, press the nozzle down hard. Start from the top and spray from one side to the other as if you're scanning the shroud. Your coats should overlap, but it's not the end of the world if it doesn't, especially because this is the first coat. I got worried because some areas weren't covered properly. I shouldn't have been, it was fine. Do not continually hold down the spray. Stop spraying when you reach the end, reset your arm back to the other end and spray it again, just further down as if you're a typewriter. Once you've painted the main shroud front, turn the card and paint the sides. You don't want to do all of the painting only to realise on your third coat you forgot to paint the sides. Make sure everything is evenly coated. Please take note, your shroud won't look properly white until about the third coat. I recommend doing six if you want a good finish. I think the minimum of four is needed for it to be peelable. Before you do another coat, you need to wait for the previous paint to dry. I left it for four hours between each coat, although for plastic dip, I believe you can do it every 30 minutes, but taking your time is always the best course of action. If you see bubbles, don't worry. Don't try and pop them, that just won't end well. Just wait, they pop by themselves. If they don't, then you've likely got a bit of dust underneath and didn't clean it properly. If bubbles are apparent, leave it for a bit more time than usual before the next coat. Repeat this six times and then on the last coat, make sure you leave it for longer than usual to cure before handling it. Also take note, on the very tips of the shroud, the paint peeled a bit. This was because the paint dried against the cardboard, so when I moved it, it peeled. To avoid this, move the shroud to a dry part of the cardboard after every coat. Okay, so the painting process is done. Let's take a look. The front of the shroud itself has turned out actually very well, it's nice and even with basically no imperfections. The sides however are a bit of a different story. Remove the masking tape by using your scalpel to cut the paint from the tape so it doesn't peel off. Then use the scalpel as a lever to take off the painter's tape. Do this for all tape where it interferes with the finish. You can see here the LED window has crumpled a bit. It's still sticky so smoothening it out fixes it. You can see on the side of the card there are still some black areas where the paint wasn't able to get to. It's quite hard to avoid this, it's due to Seuss's weird alien markings design, making it difficult to paint, so this is where our mini brush comes in handy. Spray the Plasti Dip into the lid to use it as a sort of inkwell if you like, then dip the paintbrush in the paint and go over small details on your card. Be very light because the wet paint makes the rest of the paint wet, so you can smudge your finish. I found the best technique to do was just to dab on the areas, not touch by paint. Don't over apply here because that will cause the side to look bulgy, which you don't want. If it still looks a bit black, it doesn't really matter because you can't notice it when it's in the case. The shadows catch those grooves anyway, making it seem much more natural. Once it's dry, all we have to do now is put the card back together. Essentially, it's just repeating the first few steps, but in reverse. Remember to put the rubber of transparent tubing back in the shroud's grooves, otherwise you won't have your LEDs running through your card lighting up the heatsink, and that would suck because that looks really nice at night. Asus did a great job on that. Anyway, screw the shroud back onto the cooler, and then replace the thermal compound on the GPU's die. I applied a bit too much on this one. A tiny X or a little bean-sized blob will be fine, as long as it gets spread out evenly, it's all good. The screws for the shroud and the screws that go onto the back plate are different sizes, so be careful to use the right ones. Make sure you connect the cables for the LEDs and the fans, and then screw the cooler back onto the GPU. So there we have it, we have successfully painted our GTX 1080 Ti Strix white, and damn it looks good. Again for comparison, here's the original. And here's what it looks like now. I also got a custom backplate done for the card, which I designed myself, and then was made by a guy called Daniel Fletcher, who has a trade for doing these kinds of things. I'll leave his Facebook link down below if any of you are interested in a custom backplate. When I got the backplate, it was beautiful. The mirror vinyl was perfectly flush, but I recorded this a while after it got it, and I've been using it for a pretty long time now. You'll notice there are a number of bubbles on the backplate. This is because the heat from the GPU bends the acrylic, causing air pockets. The issue wouldn't be as prevalent if I'd have opted for a thicker backplate, but it was an oversight. To get rid of the bubbles, get a fine pin and just pop them, then spread them out. I've ordered some new vinyl wrap to replace this current one, which will account for the slight curve of the backplate, so I will be redoing it. For now, this will have to do. Now, with the custom backplate installed, let's see the final product. I think we can all agree it looks absolutely fantastic. A white shroud is definitely a nice change of pace for the Strix Cooler. And yes, before a lot of you say, I am the guy that put this up on Reddit. People asked me to do a step-by-step -step sort of guide on how to do it, and a lot of people were also interested in the disassembly of the Strix, so I thought I would upload this little guide here. I can wholeheartedly recommend custom painting your GPUs, especially if you use Plasti Dip. 
If you mess it up or if you ever need to return it, you can just peel off the paint and then send it in for a replacement or a refund or whatever. And then when you get it back, just spend another day and maybe you even perfect your coat. This project was a lot of fun and it does a lot to customise my PC. The GPU is definitely the centrepiece and I am very actually proud of it. It looks great in the case, it looks great at night, and if any of you have any questions uh, or anything to say, then just put it down in the comments down below and I will make sure that I get right back to you. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this little guide here. If you did enjoy it, then do show your appreciation by tapping the like button. I love your face and I will see you guys in the next one. Terra.